Hello and welcome everyone to my channel Code with Ease. In this video today, we are going to discuss about a Geeks for Geeks popular practice problem, parenthesis checker. So in this question, we'll be given an expression string x and we have to check whether the pairs of these given braces are in the correct order. So we have three types of braces here. This is one curly braces, this is the normal braces and this is the square braces. And we have to check if the pairing is done correctly and the ordering should also be correct. So as we can see in the first example, this is the input that is given the expression and the output is true because they're balanced. So balanced as in anything that is opening, it should have its closing counterpart and the closing should be done appropriately. Like if the red here, like we see the curly braces was open first, then we have this one that is open and then the square braces. Since this is the innermost, so this brace should close first, then the outer one and then the outermost one. So they are balanced and they are in the correct order, so that is why the output is true. If it is unbalanced, then we have to return, I think, yeah, we have to return the boolean false. This is an example of an unbalanced expression and this is the time complexity, so order of n. So with this, let's move to the whiteboard to understand the approach for this problem. So into the whiteboard, I've taken two examples. One is a valid parenthesis, uh, the first one, the green one, and the second one will be an invalid parenthesis. So we are going to do a dry run of both of them one by one. So let's see uh, how do we do that. Stack will be our data structure. So let's see, this is the stack. Okay. And um, Let's try to see what should be the approach for this. Okay. So stack we know, right? There are in stack mainly three operations that we do. One is push, pop, peak. Push means adding the stack. Pop is removing out of the stack. Peak is seeing whatever is there at the top. There's a top pointer. And we check whatever is being pointed by this top. And um, as we know, stack is following a leap of principle, last in first term. So whatever is being added at the last, that is going to be the first one that is eligible for a removal or a pop operation. So with the basics of this, now let's try to see what should be the approach. As we know, there can be only three types of braces: this, this, this and the counterparts of these. These are the opening braces and the closed ones will be this, this and this. So whenever we are going to encounter any opening braces, any opening braces, which are these three, we are going to push to the stack. Okay. Then, if any of the closing braces are being encountered, then what we do? So this is going to be a bit tricky scenario. If we are having any of the closing braces, okay. See, valid parenthesis means anything that is open has to be closed. Okay, so if we are encountering a closing braces, is when we have to apply the chunk, the major chunk of our logic. Okay, so what we will do, we will have a few scenarios to deal with here. Number one, number two, and number three. Number one would be if you encounter any of the closing braces, the stacks, but the size of the stack is already zero. I mean, suppose your string is something like this. Let's say this is the string. In the beginning, only we have encountered a closing brace. This cannot be a valid parenthesis because at the beginning, we have encountered a closing brace which doesn't have its doesn't even have its opening braces counterpart. Okay, so if size is zero already, then what we need to do? We have to simply return false. We have nothing to do, right? If size is zero, means nothing was there on the stack. This is the first thing that came in. We cannot do anything. Next is if stack dot peak. Okay, whatever the when we are doing the peak operation, whatever is there at the top is not equal to the opening counterpart. Counterpart. 
so uh, we will we'll see that in the try run again so in this case also we have to return false okay perfect we have not found its opening counterpart so anything beyond that cannot be a uh, valid parenthesis anymore so that's like end of the story so after these two things are done next is uh, the third scenario in which we are able to find uh, i mean if these two things are these two conditions are not there then obviously whatever is there at the top matches the opening counterpart and because it matches so we do a stack dot pop so we are popping that character out meaning whenever we are doing a pop operation means we had a opening braces and then from the closing braces also these two form a, a good pair and then we are just popping it out so it means we are done with this combination so that is why we are going to pop it out and then we are going to continue with the rest of the string so this is going to be the uh, logic in, for the case in which we are going to encounter a closing braces so after doing this here will return false here will return false in this we are not going to return anything okay then the at last what we have to do is um we have to check a condition again here there can be two things two scenarios either the stack size stack size will be equal to zero means everything that was popped or that was pushed into the stack was popped out and then stack size becomes zero very good so everything is done cleared out so return true means we had a valid parenthesis so i give a very small example suppose this this was pushed then this was also pushed when this came this combination was done so this got popped out and when this came then this com this first opening uh, braces was found and this was popped so ultimately the stack contained nothing so in this case we are simply going to return true otherwise what can happen the stack size is greater than zero means we do have certain uh, elements in the stack still when can this happen when we have additional opening braces something like you know this is there this has been there and uh, yeah that's it so this got pushed this got pushed this got pushed but when this came this combination was done so this thing got popped but these two never had any closing counterpart so this remained in the stack because of this reason it never became a valid parenthesis so in this case also we have to return false so apart from not having a valid counterpart of uh, opening and closing there can be another scenario where uh, it will have additional braces additional opening braces and then also we have to return false okay so as we already discussed the approach above let's start with the dry run so i have the string over here and i have the stack so let's start with the dry run so this is the current character that we are at the first one it's the opening braces we push this to the stack then we are here this is also an opening character opening square braces we to push this then we encounter another one that's also opening one so we push this then the fourth one we push this as well then here we have encountered the first closing braces so for closing braces as i told there are three scenarios one if the stack size is already zero it will return false but the stack size is not zero here we already have some elements so we are not going to return false next is if the stack dot peak so since stack dot peak is going to put us point us to this this is where the top is um this element is this is going to be the opening counterpart so this is the closing square braces and this is the opening uh, square braces so yes it is so they are going to pop this so to just pop this out and the top comes here then you move to this this is the closing uh, braces for this and this is the opening braces this again is a match we are going to pop this then you move here this is the closing square braces we have the 
opening message at all when I already moved here. Yes, it is a match, so we pop this also. And finally, we have reached here. And we see there's a matching opening bracer, so we form this also. So with this, now at this point, we have nothing in the stack. Then move on to the next character, his opening bracer, so we'll add this. This again is opening bracer, so we'll add this. This also is opening bracer, so we'll add this. Same with this, we'll add this. Okay. Again, again. Uh, we have encountered a closing brace here. So this and this is a match, so we'll pop this. Moving on to the next. This curly braces is matching with the opening curly braces, we'll pop this. This is a closing square braces. We already have those square braces on the top. Yes, we have to pop this. And finally, we have reached here. We have a closing braces and this is the opening braces, so we'll pop this. So we have reached to the end of the string. Now what we have in the stack, nothing. Size is zero. So as I told, after the end of the for loop, if the size is zero, we have to return to it. So it's a valid parenthesis. Okay, now let's try uh, try doing this uh, right on with the invalid example. Okay, so now we are going to do a right on of the invalid parenthesis. So in this, we'll push the first character, then we'll push the second one. Then it's also opening braces and push third one. Then we have square braces that push this. Now we have encountered this. Okay. This is the curly braces, but uh, again, three conditions stack size is not zero, but peak of this is not matching with its opening counterpart. So here only, since it is not a match, we have to return false. Return false. So we didn't even have to check further. The moment we encountered something that was not matching with the top, we are just uh, going to return false. So this was a write on for the invalid parenthesis also. So yeah, that's it about the approach and the write ons. Let's move to the coding. So we'll start with the code changes as we are going to take a stack. So we'll define a stack here. The stack is going to contain the characters and we'll say this is stack of brackets new stack. Okay, and then we have to traverse through this string, string X, and then we have to pick each character out of that. So we'll use a for loop. Uh, less than x dot length. So within this, we have to start with the first character. So as we said, in case of opening braces, we'll add those to the stack. At uh, I mean, we'll push to stack rather. Yeah. So if x dot char at is uh, char at of i equals this the so one of the closing braces then we have to do stack of brackets dot push x dot char at. Then we can add an or condition here. Just copy this. This or this. So if any of the opening braces are there, we are going to push that x dot caret of i into the stack. Else if the first thing is else if x dot caret of i. Now if one by one, now we are going to deal with the closing braces. So if this is the closing this, okay, then what we are going to do? I think we spoke about there are three scenarios and that is going to be repeating across uh, all the other, uh, all the other closing races. So I'll just copy this. So 
So one is this, and another would be this. So these are the three scenarios. So I can just um, I just note it down first. What are the scenarios? What what can it be? One is if the stack of uh, the size of the stack is already zero. Okay, if the size is already zero. Then we have to return false. Here the return type is boolean, so we are enabling to return false. That is one thing. Else, if the stack of brackets, just copy the stack of brackets dot peak, the element at the top is not equal to its opening counterpart. What is the opening counterpart of this? Is this curly braces? Even and then in in that condition also we have to return false. Okay, and lastly, if these are not true, the else would be we have to. Uh, the else would be the condition where we have found a uh, matching opening braces for that, and hence we have to simply do a pop operation over here. Just pop it. Okay. Um, and then um, this is done. So these three things we have to repeat across all the scenarios. We can also move this into a method so that we have to do it later. Uh, let me just copy this. And this and then change the opening braces counterpart. This will be this one. And this just check the brackets also. If uh, this is true, this is for one. Okay. The for loop ends here. Okay. So this part is going to deal with the opening braces and the closing braces. Now, once this is done, now we are out of the for loop. Here also, few things. If the stack is having a size that is equal to zero, means everything is pushed and popped successfully, and we can simply return true. Otherwise, it will be false. Means if it is anything uh, other than zero, it should be. Other than zero means it will be greater than zero only, so it will, it will return false. Uh, why return false? Because there may be opening braces in this case. So with that, uh, we are returning a boolean everywhere. Uh, yeah, I think should be good. Let's try running this. Okay, so looks like there's a mismatch in the output. So we we'll look at the code once. Mm, opening braces we are pushing in case of this so uh, this is opening looks fine this and this okay looks uh, fine pop and it's done and here if this is the closing braces uh, okay yeah this seems to be the issue this will be the opening counterpart okay now let's try again try again We'll try to submit the code. Yeah, so we have all the test cases passed. Okay. So with this, I think um, that's a wrap for this problem. Thank you so much for watching the video.